What's going on, everybody? It is January 22nd, Monday slate. Got a ton of games, ton of weird games. Uh, nine games tonight. I'm saying games a lot. Games, games, games. Um, uneventful weekend with basketball, so, you know, took the day off yesterday, no video, but we're back today. Um, one thing I wanted to address that would be quick, it was spotted that I added a little box here with some percentages. Um, it's nothing that's factored into the projections. I just wanted sort of a visual of defensive strength. So on NBA.com, you can get uh, opponent per possession stats for guards, forwards, and centers. So what we're seeing here is um, for the season, Sacramento has increased guard fantasy points per possession by 4%, forwards by 4%, centers by 5%. And then I took all of the, since I have all of the actuals that have happened for the entire year, um, I weight those, you know, recent stuff way higher than stuff that happened in October. And I took the totals for each team. So the last number is just the, the total impact on fantasy points that they have had for the season. I just wanted like a visual indicator of, uh, of defense for right now. So that's really, Sacramento is really bad, but we all already know that. So let's get into it. Hornets hosting the Kings. It's the only 7 o'clock game. Uh, Hornets with a 110.25 implied total, which would be third. Why do I not have FanDuel data here? Ugh. Everything was just there, too. Hornets are right here. Oh, are they not a member? Are they not a part of it? That would make total sense. FanDuel's so weird like that. Starting at 7.30. Okay, I'll, I'm going to go over the game anyway um, for DraftKings peeps, but obviously this isn't super relevant to uh, anybody playing FanDuel. Um, I think Kemba looks pretty good. 7,700. He only needs to get the 38. Been right around there his last three. Uh, it'd be crazy not to be interested in him on DK. Okay, now this was working. I'm going to lose my mind. So I bought a new hard drive um, instead of what I was using for the past for the last video, but now it's, it's worse somehow, which I didn't think was possible. Which leads me to believe I'm going to have to rebuild this entire sheet that there's some sort of leak somewhere, but I don't know why that would happen on a better computer. But we're not going over that again. I'm just going to have to take my time. Dwight Howard, 8,100. He would need 40 for 5x, 48 for 6x. Uh, he's been in the 40s in one, two, three, four, five of his last six. Um, you know, obviously, the Kings aren't too much to worry about. It took six full seconds to tab out of that. So there's obviously something incorrect in this file that is, you know, causing major, major issues. I'm going to try to turn off everything while I'm in here right now, but at some point in time, I'm going to need to figure this out. I don't know how that happens. Well, it's not that. And if it's going to do that every time, that's going to be uh, pretty annoying. I'm going to have to turn calculations off. Um, yeah, that's, that'll probably be the easiest way to do this. Let's see if that helps. No, oh, it doesn't, but for it certainly should. There's no, like, there is no, there's no reason that should even do anything after I enter that in. 
Sorry, guys. I know you guys don't care about this. Marvin Williams, 4,100. It's really not that bad. I actually think Kemba might be a 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then Michael Kidd Gilchrist. It's questionable, I believe. 4,300. Ah, it's not for me. All right, to Sacramento we go. Let's grab the Kings. Kings with a terrible implied total. I uh, don't get the sense that if you're playing on DK, you're going to want too much of the Kings, but you never know what's going to come out for news regarding uh, the old guys. So we've got, well, okay, we've got some interesting value. De'Aaron Fox is 5,100. So you need 25 to 30. Hit 26 in his last one, has had a 30-pointer in a couple. It's not the worst. It's a decent price for him. Still just a three. Um, I'm okay on Bogdan, I'm okay on Willie Cauley-Stein, but Scal at 4,300 is kind of interesting if he's going to be getting, I've got him for 29 minutes, um, he played 29 minutes in the last one, put up 27 fantasy points, it's only 4,300, so it's hard to say, don't take Scal, it's a great price. Still just, wow, he, you know what, he's probably a two. You need him to get to 21, like 21 to 25, but if he's going to be playing that big of minutes, no reason to suspect he can't get there. And then finally, Buddy Heald, 4,600. You know, you're looking for 23 plus. He had 30 in the last one. He had 28 a couple nights ago. Uh, no reason to think that can't happen. It's an ugly game. Um, I wouldn't want more than one Buddy Healder. <laughs> I wouldn't want more than one uh, king, and I'd probably focus on Scal, but it, that all looks good. Um, Alright, now let's get to the main slate, since um, that game isn't included. We'll go to the Hawks. Hawks are have a 101.25 implied total, 17th on the day. Um, this game's atrocious from a fantasy perspective. Only thing that I'm interested in seeing is uh, John Collins has been getting a couple extra minutes, and I want to see how much his price has responded to that. So, first up is Schroeder. 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. I don't think any part of that looks interesting. He needs 40. He's been there twice in the past two weeks. Jazz, not exactly the team that you're looking to go against with, uh, like, excitement from a fantasy perspective. So I'm going to pass there. Really, I'm going to pass on most of this, except for uh, Torian Prince on DK is 4,700. Um, you know, if he can get to, like, the 25 range, ooh, he has been absolutely dreadful this past four. Yeah, I'm going to skip that one. John Collins, 6,200 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. A $1,500 price gap at that level is insane. So you would need 31 on FanDuel for 5x, and on he would need like 28 for 6x on DK. Silly. Um, I mean, he's an awesome play on DraftKings. Let's say something along the lines of he's probably a two. If I'm being honest, I'll go to Utah now. Jazz, uh, 103.75 implied total, which is 14th.
again, nothing terribly interesting in this game. Um, Rubio's price continues to be interesting. Atlanta, really bad defensively. You see, those are um, about as high as those thresholds get. So you'll see if I hop over to this page quick just to show it off. Um, that would be perfect. So that's percentages for guards range from positive adding 4% to cutting 6%. That seems to be the range. You know, we're looking at like 5 to 5 is the plus 5 to minus 5 is sort of the range. And then the totals, um, same sort of scenario, uh, plus 5 to, well, in this case, maybe more like 6 to 6. But, you know, just a little something so that I could have a visual indicator. Uh, I don't have any interest in Joe Ingles, but Donovan Mitchell is 8,000. He would need to get to 40. He's done that three of his last five. Um, Hawks, not very good defensively. Sign me up. Um, probably just the three on both sites, but I'll take it. I don't want Joe Ingles. I will want Ricky Rubio, I believe. 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Uh, that's 27 for FanDuel done it in his last three he's just been super consistent the price is still a little bit lower than where he should be uh, I love it I love it as much as I could love somebody playing in a game that has the worst implied total for the night I guess uh, I don't want Gobert at that price not right now at least um, I don't want favors at all and uh, Hood is a little dinged up, so that doesn't seem like a place that I'm going to take a stand. This is a great visual matchup for Joe Ingles, but at 5,300, he's just, he's too expensive. I know that he's been playing decent, you know, had a pretty monster game two nights ago. But, you know, you need him to get to 26 on FanDuel. You need every, you need all the stars to align to do that. I like him in like a, you know, multi-entry GPP scenario, but that's about it. To Houston we go. Um, Rockets, 110.75 implied total would be second. This line does not exist right now. Uh, it's obviously made up. Miami's been good defensively, as you can see. The, the final number, the minus 5%, that one will be sort of the most relevant or at least the most um, directionally accurate in that it's it's taking all of the data from this season but you know a game played yesterday is going to have a dramatic more amount of or dramatic amount more of weight to it than you know something played in November so it's a really good barometer of their defensive their their defensive ability like right now so uh, Ariza and Gerald Green should be back, although with everybody back and healthy now, including Mba Mute, uh, I wouldn't expect Gerald Green to be getting a ton of minutes. That could change, um, but it's sort of jiving with everything else I've seen today. Ariza at 5,500, uh, I can't see any scenario where that looks good. Um, Chris Paul at 10-2. That's something I could be potentially interested in. He needs 50. Obviously went huge against the Warriors. Um, I like that Chris Ball. Nothing crazy, but I think a, a you know third tier is fine. Nothing jumping off the page yet. Harden might be jumping off the page. 10-3 on FanDuel, so he needs 50 as well. Um, still getting his, his legs back under him, but you know a home game might be the answer for that. I actually prefer Harden to Paul on FanDuel. I'd probably want the extra $500 on DK. Um, but I like both of those guys there. I don't want Eric Gordon. 
Only other person would be Clint Capella. 7,700, so he'd need 38. Hit it in the last one. He's had two 40-point games in the last two weeks. Okay, none of these guys are like ultra values. So I don't know. To the Heat we go. Um, Dragic is questionable. I think Tyler Johnson is still questionable as well. Uh, it's something you want to keep in mind. I have them both projected in right now, but that could change things pretty dramatically. Uh, heat 101.25 implied total in this scenario, which would be uh, tied for 17th. That's pretty bad, but you know that's what happens when you're shorthanded and you're playing at the Rockets. You're not going to be uh, projected to win that game. Josh Richardson's price only went up $300, which is interesting, but I don't really like this. I would say only person I would want to look at would be Tyler Johnson. Assuming he plays, he's at 5,400. He would need 27. That would really be my only interest here. I don't, yeah, I don't like the prices of anybody else. And even then, Tyler Johnson's probably still just a four. Then we get this dreadful nonsense. Grizzlies hosting the Sixers. Uh, Sixers three and a half point favorites at home. Uh, 102 implied total for the Grizzlies would be 15th. Lots of people dinged up. Um, there's, I might not even know it off the top of my head because it's the Grizzlies. It's easier to just go back to this. Uh, so no Parsons, no James Ennis, no Jermichael Green. Take that information for what it's worth. The fact that the line is only three is staggering, but that's what happens when you play a home game. Okay. Marcus Gasol, 7,900 and 7,600. He would need 40. He's done it at the end of the two-week span, but hasn't been good lately. Been getting a dose of Embiid tonight then, too. I don't... Uh, he's a four. I can't disregard him completely. But, man, it's really hard to, to really want to go after Marcus All. Tyreek Evans is 8,000. He would also need 40. Now, this one I think I like a little bit more. He, he's been really boom or bust lately. 20s, 20s, 20s. But he's also been, you know, 45, 45, 40, 40. So, uh, I like it a little bit more there. Dylan Brooks is 4,000 on FanDuel. He would need 20. Um, he's done that in his last four you know, it's you have to look there. Where does Cruncher fit on that? Yeah, they're a little lower. At that price, it's hard to ignore it. Same for Jarrell Martin, also four thousand. He would need twenty. Um, he's hit that in his last two. He had a thirty-pointer, but since he's been getting this increased minutes, which you would expect him to get tonight. Uh, you know, it looks good again. I don't like seeing so much value. I mean, the Kings game isn't going to matter as much because it's not open on FanDuel, but I hate seeing so much value on guys on teams that suck. It's really tricky to build around that. Andrew Harrison, um, you probably only want to play him on DraftKings. Hmm. 
Okay. Ah. Um. He's probably just a three still on DK. I'm assuming he plays. That's the reason he's there. And then Wayne Selden, 3,900. So he needs 20. Obviously put up a monster in his last one. But, you know, you got to be confident that the minutes are coming. Uh, I've got him at 23, which is probably a little bit lower than what I would like him to be at for me to roster him. So let's go to Philly. Ooh. Sixers, 105.5 implied total, 11th on the night. I have a feeling this is going to look pretty good, but... So Memphis has been neutral the entire year on each possession or each position, but recently they've just been down from a points-per-minute perspective. That doesn't look as good as I was expecting. So, Covington is 6200 on FanDuel, 5400 on DK. How has his salary moved? Because I know he was priced down. Mm. See, that's brutal. Was down to 5100 now back up to 6200 That's how they trick you. He's like a speed trap. He needs 31 um, I don't. I don't have any interest in that. Um, who are the better offensive rebounders for the Sixers? Ben Simmons, awesome. TJ McConnell for the position, awesome. And then Amir. Ben Simmons is 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK, so he needs 40. Um, he's hit it once in the past two weeks. He had 38 in his most recent one. I really like this for him. Uh, let me make sure I'm not totally crazy. But that offensive rebounding rate is, is really interesting to me. How well do the Sixers do on putbacks? A lot of points on putbacks. Yeah, I like Ben Simmons. I think he has a really good matchup here. So, that's my plan. Um, yeah, I'm going to focus on him tonight. Saric, 6100 How much has his price moved? Yeah, he's up now, too. I had no problem grabbing him at 5300 It was just a ridiculous price at 6100 That's where he's supposed to be. Uh, 30 in his last two. You know, I don't I don't have a problem taking him, but he's not. He's not high up now. Embiid, 10-4. So you're looking for 52. It's a 150-point gain. Well... Let's call it a 60-point game in the past two weeks. The rest of them, not so much. Um, this doesn't seem like one of the Embiid games where he's going to just go crazy. So I don't I don't think I'm looking for Embiid tonight. TJ McConnell at 5,400. Be 27. Uh, yeah, I definitely, definitely like that. I just said that like I was Rain Man. All righty. To Milwaukee we go. Uh, still no Giannis, um, but by all accounts it seems though Brogdon will play. Uh, Bledsoe was not the best. It was the Middleton show with Giannis out. We'll see how it looks tonight. Bucks 108.75 implied total is fifth. They've got a date with the Sun. It did I enter that right? Can they really only be four-point favorites at home against the Suns? That has to be it. I had to type that in wrong. Nope, that's what the line is right now. 
Wow, so that is, that's just insane. So obviously we know um, the Suns are atrocious defensively. Uh, so this is gonna definitely going to be a spot where we want to focus. Um, so Chris Middleton is 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. He would need 43. He had 54 in the last one. I don't like it. I really don't. Yeah, I'm not going to be focused on that. I like Eric Bledsoe a ton. He needs 41. Um, Suns, revenge game. I would assume he's going to be incredibly popular. But I like him a lot more than I like Middleton. I don't... I don't know what it is. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon is 6,300 on FanDuel, which is pretty cost prohibitive. He would need 30 and change. Uh, he's only 5,000 on DraftKings, which I think is interesting. So I'm going to say that he's actually a DK2 and a FanDuel 4. I rarely have a, a double gap there, but I mean, $1,300. Brogdon's gonna, if he plays, Brogdon's gonna play 34 minutes. You know he had he's had a 40 point game in this stretch, super consistent. Only needs 25 to hit 5x, so I like that a lot. Henson 5600 on Fanduel, 4800 on DK. I don't love it. I'm probably gonna look a different direction. Um, and I wouldn't trust Sterling Brown. So that's probably it. But it'll it'll just be a lot of Bledsoe for me. Suns now. Suns 104.75 implied total, which is 12th. This could look pretty interesting. Okay, so Booker is 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. I have a feeling I'm going to want this. Needs 42 for value. He's done that three of his last four, including the 67-point barrage a couple nights ago. Um, no Giannis makes me like that. A lot. I could see Booker wanting to shoot to prove, you know, the sort of the opposite of the Eric Bledsoe issue. Just a three, though. I don't totally love the price. TJ Warren is seven thousand on FanDuel, sixty-eight hundred on DK. So they've brought his salary up quite a bit. He was sixty-seven hundred. Now he's back up to seven. Slowly climbing back up to where he was before. Uh, so he needs 35 on FanDuel. He's hit it, and uh, he hit it in that one. So I'm gonna go for that as well. Um, same, just a three for me. I don't think I see anything else that I'm interested in. Although Tyson Chandler at 4,800. Needs 24. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, I'm good. Let's go to the Pels. Pelicans, 115.75 implied total. They're hosting the Bulls. Uh, six and a half point favorites. They have the highest implied total on the slate tonight. It's kind of interesting. Anxious to see the pricing. No Chris Dunn is the expectation for the Bulls tonight. Um, so first up, we'll look at Boogie. He's 11-5 uh, on FanDuel, 10-9 on DK. So you're looking for 55-plus out of Boogie. He's done that twice in the past two weeks. You know, he's been pretty steady. I'm 
Let's see, who do I prefer more, Boogie or AD? It's got to be AD, right? Probably, yeah. So DeMarcus Cousins, obviously I still like him. Um, I think this is a good spot for them. You know, the Pels aren't much of an offensive rebounding team to begin with, so Chicago's advantage there is a little less for me. Uh, Boogie's just a three. <laughs> Drew Holiday, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. This price is just crazy. Needs a little over 40. Um, he's had one, two, three, four games at four. Four out of his last five have been 48 or higher, which is insane. His price isn't really moving, though, is it? I don't know. He's up dramatically. You just happen to be in the sevens there. Okay. Um, hard to get super excited at that price point on FanDuel. He's a, I'm going to say he's a DK2. And he's a FanDuel 3. And then AD, 11.5 on FanDuel. Same price as Boogie. 10.8 on DK. Uh, $100 cheaper. He needs 57-ish. Um... We know that he had two monsters last week. Neither of them are jumping out at me. We'll see where the value ends up if we end up pulling one of those guys in on the optimization. Then I'll dig into them a little bit further. Um, Etom Moore, I'm fine. He's fine on uh, DK. I don't really want any Darius Miller or Rondo. Although... I like Darius Miller in a GPP on DK, 3,500. That's not bad. Let's go to Chicago. Bulls 109.25 implied total is fourth. So this is the best game from a points perspective on the slate. It's just crazy to think about. Yeah, we're anticipating no Chris Dunn. So first up would be Justin Holiday. 5,500, uh, I don't totally see it. Let's see the NBA Wowie numbers with and without Chris Dunn. So Chris Dunn on the floor. Chris Dunn off the floor. Um, little bit of a boost to Jerry and Grant. Doesn't really matter to Holiday or Valentine. It's relatively uh, not important. Good to know. So yeah, I don't think I want Justin Holiday then. Uh, I don't like the matchup completely. Marking in though, 6,300 on FanDuel, 67 on DK. Am I crazy or is 31 for value for him nuts? Yeah, he's just an exceptional play tonight. I thought so. Did they drop his price? It seems like a weird thing for someone that's been playing constantly. No, it's just kind of steadily there. So you need 31 for him. He's done that in three of his last five including a 54-point barrage. Um, but I, I definitely like marking in here. Um, he's a two for me on FanDuel. Three for me on DK. I don't think I want any other bulls. Um, you know, I don't really have any interest in Jerry and Grant. I don't really have any interest in anybody else. Yeah. So, to Dallas we go. 106 implied total is 10th on the day. They are two-point underdogs hosting the Wizards. I don't think there's going to be anything super interesting to see here on the Mavs. I think everybody's healthy and back.
All righty, Barnes, 6,700. That's 33. I don't. That seems high, but he had been playing okay. Um. Hmm. I don't hate Barnes here. I don't normally like Barnes, so it's still just a three, but I'm okay with it. Wes Matthews is 5,200, so he needs 26. He's hit that, you know, a few times in this last couple. Um, I don't mind these guys as filler. Not a big Yogi Ferrell guy, so I'm going to pass. Dennis Smith Jr., though, 6,800 on both. We need 35. He's had two 40-point games in the past two weeks. Um, I don't... Yeah, I'm not married to it. No on Dirk. No uh, Beret on DK is fine. But I'd rather look at Washington. A 108 implied total is 7th. Uh, I'm hoping that something pops off the page here. Okay, so Bradley Beal is 7,600 on FanDuel and 7,400 on DraftKings. I think that I'm going to absolutely love this. 38. He hit 38 in the last one. He had two 44-point games earlier. Um, I like Bradley Beal a ton here. Uh, Dallas as a whole has been okay lately defensively, but... For the season, not the best against guards. Um, I like Beal a lot. Wall at 10-1. I mean, 50 is a ton of points. He did it in four straight. But I would make uh, Beal my priority if I had to. And I do have to because I'm playing. <laughs> Kelly Oubre, 4,900. 25 for him. Um, he's been there in two of the last three, basically three of four. Has been getting a little bit of increased run. Um, I don't know. I don't hate it. Markeith is 4,400. That's 22. Um, he Highs and lows, but... Does have the ability to get into the 30s. I like it for him. I don't know. I feel like I'm not quite the wordsmith today. Uh, having trouble getting myself started on this Monday. But let's go to Denver now. Uh, Nuggets hosting the Blazers. 107.25 implied total. They're, that would be 8th. They're 3-point favorites um, at home. I don't have uh, Jamal Murray to carry me today. Well, I mean, I do have him. He's playing. But, you know, kind of nailed that one. Portland, exceptional defensively this year, which is crazy to think about. Um, Gary Harris at 7,400. I don't have a single bit of interest in. Jamal Murray, 6,300 on FanDuel. 6,000 on DK. How much did they jump Murray's salary? Just 100. Okay, so he's still below where he was for an extended amount of time. Uh, I don't know. You know, the, the matchup is kind of tricky for this year at least. But 31, um, he has the ability to get there. And that's really all that matters. We got Wilson Chandler at 5,000, uh, 4,500 on DraftKings. Chandler would need 25. So I hate Wilson Chandler. <laughs> Every time I ignore him, he goes crazy. Jokic is at 9,800. He's 50. 
I've had him in those past two where he's put up mid thirties. I didn't have him when he put up sixty five. Ugh. Apologies for the yawn. Yeah, I don't. How did he do against Portland earlier in the year? Because I remember thinking about the Jokic uh, Nurkic showdown. He put up forty eight which would not be value or basically just add it the last time. So, yeah, I'm going to – I don't think it's going to be a Jokic day. I don't want Barton. I do want to look at Trey Lyles, though. Lyles is 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Uh, I think that he's going to be seeing some more time with Jokic at the 5, which is great. He needs 27 for value. He's been in and around that area lately, uh, but he – Trey Lyles kind of feels like Malcolm Brogdon to me. I feel pretty safe with it. Go to Portland. Uh, Blazers with the 104.25 implied total, which is 13th. Anxious to see Dame and CJ's salaries here. Denver's defense not been great lately. So Dame, 9,300 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. Needs 46 and change. Uh, been right there lately a ton. I really like Dame. And then CJ is 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. That's 36. Uh, also been right there. Um, I really like both of these guys tonight. Um, I would say... I would guess I'd be more likely to have Dame than CJ, but I do like them both. I don't want a Minu. Evan Turner at 3,800 is... Did they cut his salary dramatically? I feel like it was in like the low to mid fours. Sort of. If he's going to play 30 minutes, um, you know, that's a really good value. The Nurkic, 6,700. He's just not really playing enough minutes. He would need 33. You know, he can get there. I don't I don't love it though. Just a four for me. To the final game of the night. 1030 start. Clippers hosting the Wolves. Uh, Clippers with a 108.25 implied total, which is sixth. Uh, going with the assumption that Jimmy Butler and Jamal Crawford are both playing. Um anything changes there you know we'll have updates so clippers lou will is 9200 which is just insane but you know that's what happens when the dude goes for 70 fantasy points in his last game um this is not a great matchup for him he needs 46 you know he's been there a lot um i just i can't get to it at that price point he's probably like 500 dollars more expensive than i would like yeah blake 8400 and 8600 how good of an offensive rebounder is blake not in the least good to know so he needs 42, um, you know, two games in the 40s in the past week and a half, high 30s. You know, he's fine. Tyrone Wallace, on the other hand, is somebody I'm going to be looking at just because he continues to get the minutes and has the ability to score in bunches. Um, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK will work for me. And then Taya Dosic, 4,800 on FanDuel. So if he can get to 25, that's a goal. Um, 
not the best game in his last one. You know, sometimes lays some eggs, but can get to 28 or 33. I'm okay with that. It does concern me a little bit that Minnesota forces a ton of turnovers, so I don't want to go too crazy on Taya Dosich. And then Harrell, 5,500. 27 would, would get you there. Played shorter minutes in this most recent one, but... You know, has a couple 30-point games. He's a very good offensive rebounder, which could help. Just a three, though. And then finally, Minnesota Timberwolves. What's the total? 106.75 implied total. They're uh, one and a half point underdogs. This would be, they would be ninth on the slate. Hoping to like a bunch here. So Wiggins, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Needs 31. He's been playing significantly better lately. No real craters. Um, I like Wiggins here. Jimmy Butler is 9,200, so he's looking for 46. I have no reason to think that he couldn't do that. Actually, you know what? He's probably a FanDuel 2 for me and a DK 3. And then Towns, 9,400 on FanDuel. He needs 47. Um, been in the high 30s lately as this sort of uh, normal spot, but can get up into... Um, the 50s and 60s. No DeAndre makes me think that Towns is in for a bit better of a, a game. I like Towns as a two. I would prefer Towns to Butler as well. Taj, 5,600 uh, would be a 28. I have no, no reason to think that that would be a problem. And T at 6,000 would be 30. Um, he would probably be my least favorite of the of the guys. So I spelled that wrong. So that is it. That would be the short list. You know, all obviously um, uh, for those that you did, that don't know, all of these short list tiers that all shows up on my website with the projections. So. You know, if you're looking for it, that's where you would want to be. Um, but let's run this stuff through the uh, optimizer and see how it shakes out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what could be making this so slow, but we'll get to the bottom of it. But it is ground to a halt. You can see it's still spinning now, just from a refresh click. Makes me think it's something with my tier formula, so I'll try to figure that out. But not anything anybody else has to worry about. Except for listening to me uh, bitch about it for the past two days. I'm anxious for the live stream tonight, which I guess I have uh, buried the lead for. So we will be going live tonight, um, starting at mm, probably 6.30 since uh, I'm not super concerned with that Hornets game since I'm going to be playing on FanDuel tonight. Um, why is that grabbing the grand total? It shouldn't be. Oh, I know why it is. That's fine. Um, yeah, so we're going live tonight. Probably 6.30. I don't see the need to, to rush for DK. Um, and we'll be live on the new PC, so uh, we should have no issues with the stream dropping, which I'm very happy about. And that's all because of you guys, so thank you so much. All right, what do we got? So a lot of Jarrell Martin, which makes perfect sense to me. I thought he looked pretty good. The 
Didn't I? Oh, apparently I didn't. That doesn't make any sense. Ah, oh, did I spell his name wrong? Makes perfect sense now. Uh, do I put two R's in it? Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, had to be in one of my tiers. I knew he was gonna be a ginormous value, so. Okay, so, you know, still Wallace, but this is telling me Harden and Cousins are the, the two plays for me, which I don't mind. So if I do that, then I'm gonna end up with Martin and Wallace. Who are my point guards in that scenario? Lillard and Bledsoe both as twos, so. I get Harden and Boogie as threes. I don't love it. Do we get a lot of towns? There's two towns. That's not bad for me. Bledsoe, Rubio, Booker, Beal, Barnes, Audis, Bees, Brooks, then Sarge, Martin, and Towns. I can get behind something like that. And I'll check out DK. I just realized I haven't said anything in like a really long time. My bad. <laughs> I was thinking about the wife's heading out of town to uh, to Boston on Tuesday, Tuesday to Thursday, and I was just trying to think about like what my schedule was going to be, and I realized that I was still recording and all of this mattered, so apologies for the strange amount of silence. Okay, so DK, Scal in all of them makes 100% sense. His price was insane. Um... Capella, I find interesting there. I don't think that he was someone that I had looked at with any major confidence. You know, I have him as a three, but he wasn't somebody that I expected to just jump out. 6,600. Makes sense. I'd be happy with that. I love Collins, so that makes sense. Wall, okay. Well, I do love Towns. So if I do that, you end up with two lineups that I find very interesting. Rubio, Holiday, Warren, Scal, uh, Capella, Teague, Collins, Towns looks good. I think Rubio, Brogdon, Lyles, Scal, Capella, Wall, Collins, Towns also looks good. Looks like there's going to be a lot of value on DraftKings tonight. Um, it'll be fun to see. Well, that's it, guys. I am done. Um, I'll be around all day for any questions, so you know, feel free to hit me up, Twitter, Reddit, whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll we'll be live before lock, starting at 6.30. Maybe a little bit earlier, but my focus is going to be FanDuel um, and not really paying attention to that Hornets-Kings game. So, best of luck, everybody, and I'll see you later tonight.